Okay, so challenge one was, was um, these require five volt to run and, and these are limited, the inputs, the GPIO inputs are limited to three volt only. So um, we utilize the fact that there's a three and a five volt output on the PC Duino. We power the Arduino with the three volt and then power e the sensors with the five volt output thereby by doing that um, when this when the Arduino outputs the the high to um, to our GPIO sensors it's at three volts um, another challenge we we faced was the weight the just just adding the sensors without any of the wiring um, affected how the drone flies the drone flies very, very smoothly with no added weight. Once you start adding weight, uh, it throws off the balance and and just, just I think, the added weight, it doesn't get to where it thinks it should be um, based on its ultrasonic sensor. It, it wobbles a lot. Um, initially, just with the sensors, we tried adding just the battery. Put the battery right on the center, strapped it down, and the drone couldn't take off. It couldn't handle just the weight of the battery, let alone the weight of the battery and the PC Duino. Um, that's why we went with the tethered option um, to still get the, the output from the Arduino to the PC Duino so that we could use the sensors. Um, what else did we run into? Uh, programming challenges. That was that was mainly for me, um, just where it was the first time I'd done anything with Android or or Java. Mm -hmm. well, all of us, I mean, basically done. Um, the, with Android. Yeah, Josh, you were in the same boat with Android. Oh yeah, no, I'm not a I'm not a Java guy. Um, so, what else did we learn to? Well, I can tell you with the code, it was a lot of it was a lot of fine tuning. It was a lot of magic numbers and guessing what things were. Rather than controlling flight, we say, okay, well, let's try moving forward for 10 milliseconds. And what does that mean? Well, it means that the, that the flight pattern for our uh, robot here would wiggle instead of flying forward. And so by trying to make, pull the sensors, by pulling the sensors, we were, <clears throat> Uh, not able to control flight well and so what we really needed was we needed threads and you know some concurrent processing to handle all of that we weren't able to do that instead we're just doing um, single threaded operations on for flights and that didn't work very well and when we change out the battery all the numbers have changed because the voltage was slightly different and when the motors got warm the voltage was slightly different. When the battery got warm, the voltage was slightly different. And after we crashed into the wall several times, the motors probably aren't as responsive as they once were. And all those things combined together made for unstable flight. But, uh, you know. Good luck. Thank you. And even with the challenges we faced, I think we got a pretty successful outcome Event eventually. I mean, we, had, we were able to to do the, the basic take off, fly left, right, backward, forward, and spin um, very successfully. Without the guard. And then I think even, even with this, I mean, while it wasn't completely smooth, and I think a lot of that is just due to the fact of how the, the, the copter flies with all this weight on it. Um, yeah, this, this doesn't show, yeah. this all is really heavy. We were able to see, we were able to see it respond. It would, it would actually, it would, it would respond to the sensors um, and, then, and then spin. I think we, we got, it wasn't all great in the flight, but I think we got some good moments in the flight. I think, I, yeah, we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves. Yeah. It did pretty good. Cool. All right.